Welcome to Bayesian Statistics. We're working through a non-conjugate example. You'll need to watch the two previous videos in order to understand this. I'm trying to keep these into small digestible bites instead of running something really long. So uh, I'll be doubling over myself a little bit, but that should be okay. We're back to our example now that we know how to do numerical integration. And we are, we've come up with our posterior distribution and we needed to evaluate this number in the denominator. Uh, so we have to use numerical integration, um, and we talked about that in the last video. So here we go. Uh, here's our function that we're interested in integrating. So we're going to define a function in R, f1, uh, 10x1 cubed, 1 minus x1 to the 250. The, so we came up with this in the previous video. You can see how we did that, uh, or the previous two videos. Uh, and then here, what we're interested in is do, what we did from the last video to this video is change this number from the end here from 7 to 250. Everything else is the same. Now, um, we have to realize we're integrating this from 0 to 0 0.1. And I'm going to start at a pretty small number. So dx1 here is 0 0.001. Our sequence goes from 0 to 0 0.1, which are limits of integration. And here, f1 is the height of the function, dx is the uh, width of the function, so I'm going to take and multiply the height times the width and add it up. Now, if I do this, this is the number I get. I get 1.476 uh, times 10 to the negative 8. Okay? Uh, and then if I go to point zero 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 one, I get 1.476124 times 10 to the negative 8. Uh, those are pretty close to each other, right? If I look at that, those numbers are pretty much the same all the way out at the fourth decimal place. So I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to keep narrowing this delta x down, though you could do that and you'll get more and more accurate. Uh, so now I have this number. I can just plug it into my posterior, right? This was what I was after. I have it. I plug it in here. Uh, I simplify things down because I have a 10 here and a 10 here. So this is my posterior distribution right here. Um, and now that I have it, I can actually use this thing. Um, so I want to get quantiles out of this. Now, um, in order to get quantiles out of this function, we're also going to need the CDF. So we're going to have to go back and calculate that as well. But turns out it's also numerical integration and it's really similar to what we already did. Okay, so here's what we're interested in. Here's what the posterior distribution looks like. But in order to get the quantiles, we, we need the CDF. Okay, in order to get the CDF, we have to integrate from negative infinity to x of the function here, uh, dt. So change just a few characters in our code and we can get the CDF. Okay, so what I did is I went back and I called this CDF1 uh, instead of F1. It's exactly the same as my other one, except this time I divided by my constant that I came up with, okay, that I integrated out. I came up with that, and I just divided by it, and then I return it, and bingo. This is the actual PDF. I call it CDF, but it's really a PDF. Okay, so I'm going to use x equals 0 .00001, just like I did before, because it seemed to give me the accuracy that I wanted, so why change it? Uh, this is exactly the same. The limits of integration are from 0 to 0 0.1 uh, because that's as far as the actual post prior distribution goes. Uh, and then I'm going to use this function. Instead of using sum, I'm going to use cum sum. And cum sum is going to give me the cumulative sum of this, uh, and meaning that at every new point, it's going to give me the sum of the previous points up to that point. Uh, of my height times my width and just adding them up and I'm going to write this into a variable called CDF1 so I can look at a picture of it and here's what the picture looks like it goes from 0 plateaus up at 1 goes from 0 to 0.1 right because the prior distribution only went from 0 to 0.1 so now that I have this set up I can map this backwards in order to get my quantiles so right I would come over here I'd say I need 0 0.975 come over, find out where I hit here, and then move myself down here. 0 0.025, come over here, map myself back down to the uh, x-axis and find out what those values are. And these would form a credible interval. Okay, how do I do that in R? Well, I can use this idea. I can take the maximum of, F, of x1 where the CDF is less than 0 0.025 because in my CDF function it's unlikely to actually be that exact value 
Uh, but I can get really close, and this is the number that comes out. And I could also calculate it for the upper bound, uh, maximum X1 of where CDF1 is less than 0.975, and I end up with 0 0.034. Okay, so I end up with a posterior distribution. Yay! Now, this gives us a way to handle a non-conjugate prior distribution. You're going to have to do some sort of numerical integration, likely. And is it that hard? Not really. You just got to get the hang of it. Do it a few times, and you'll be like, eh, it's no big deal. Uh, just a little bit of computer programming. Um, in the next videos, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what happens if what happens if the data disagrees with your prior distribution. But we'll worry about that then in the next video, and I'll see you there.